Matthew 4, 23-24 And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics and paralytics, and he healed them. Matthew 8, 2-3 And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Matthew 8, 5-13 now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralysed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this one, Go, and he goes, and to another, Come, and he comes, and to my servant, Do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marvelled, and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. Matthew 8, 14-15 Now when Jesus had come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lying sick with a fever. So he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and served them. Matthew eight sixteen. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word, and healed all who were sick. Matthew 9, 2-8 Then behold, they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven you. And at once some of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemes. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Arise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. And he arose, and departed to his house. Now when the multitude saw it, they marvelled and glorified God, who had given such power to men. Matthew nine twenty to 22 And suddenly a woman, who had a flow of blood for twelve years, came from behind, and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, If only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter, your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour.
Matthew 9, 23-26 When Jesus came into the official's house and saw the flute players and the crowd in noisy disorder, he said, Leave, for this girl has not died, but is asleep. And they began laughing at him. But when the crowd had been sent out, he entered and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And this news spread throughout the land. Matthew 9, 27-31 As Jesus went on from there, two men who were blind followed him, crying out, Have mercy on us, son of David. And after he entered the house, the men who were blind came up to him. And Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, It shall be done for you according to your faith. And their eyes were opened. And Jesus sternly warned them, saying, See that no one knows about this. But they went out and spread the news about him throughout the land. Matthew 9, 35 Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Matthew 10, 1 And when he had called his twelve disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out, and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Matthew 10, 7-8 As you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Matthew 11, 4-5 Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things which you hear and see. The blind see and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Matthew 12, 10-13 And behold, there was a man who had a withered hand. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath, that they might accuse him? Then he said to them, What man is there among you, who has one sheep, and if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not lay hold of it and lift it out? Of how much more value, then, is a man than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out, and it was restored as whole as the other. Matthew twelve twenty two to 23 Then one was brought to him who was demon-possessed, blind and mute, and he healed him so that the blind and mute man both spoke and saw. And the multitudes were amazed and said, Could this be the son of David? Matthew thirteen fifteen. For the heart of this people has become dull. With their ears they scarcely hear, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their heart, and return, and I would heal them. Matthew fourteen fourteen. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion for them, and healed their sick.
Matthew 14, 34-36 After the people of that place recognised him, they sent word throughout the region and brought all who were sick to him and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak and all who touched it were healed. Matthew 15, 30-31 Then great multitudes came to him, having with them the lame, blind, mute, maimed, and many others. And they laid them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. So the multitude marvelled when they saw the mute speaking, the maimed made whole, the lame walking, and the blind seeing, and they glorified the God of Israel. Matthew 20, 29-34 As they were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed him, and two people who were blind, sitting by the road, hearing that Jesus was passing by, cried out, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. But the crowd sternly warned them to be quiet, yet they cried out all the more, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. And Jesus stopped and called to them and said, What do you want me to do for you? They said to him, Lord, we want our eyes to be opened. Moved with compassion, Jesus touched their eyes and immediately they regained their sight and followed him. Matthew 21, 13 to 14. And he said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. Mark 1, 29-31 and immediately, after they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew, with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was lying sick with a fever, and they immediately spoke to Jesus about her. And he came to her, and raised her up, taking her by the hand, and the fever left her, and she served them. Mark 1, 32-34 now when evening came, after the sun had set, they began bringing to him all who were ill and those who were demon-possessed. And the whole city had gathered at the door, and he healed many who were ill with various diseases and cast out many demons. Mark 1, 40-42 And a man with leprosy came to him, imploring him and kneeling down and saying to him, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Moved with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. Mark 2, 3-12 Then some people came, bringing to him a paralysed man carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him, and after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, Why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy, and who can forgive sins but God alone? At once Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves, and he said to them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up, and take your mat, and walk? but so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and go to your home. And he stood up, 
and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Mark 3, 1-5 Again he entered the synagogue, and a man was there whose hand was withered, and they were watching him closely to see if he would heal on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. He said to the man with the withered hand, Get up and come forward. And he said to them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath, or to do harm, to save a life, or to kill? But they kept silent. After looking around at them with anger, grieved at their hardness of heart, he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored. Mark 3, 9-10 He told his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd, so that they would not crush him. For he had cured many, so that all who had diseases pressed upon him to touch him. Mark 3, 13 to 15. And he went up on the mountain and called to him those he himself wanted, and they came to him. Then he appointed twelve, that they might be with him, and that he might send them out to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out demons. Mark 5, 22 to 24 and 35 to 43. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, that she may be healed, and she will live. So Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be afraid, only believe. And he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a commotion, and those who wept and wailed loudly. When he came in, he said to them, Why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. But when he had put them all outside, he took the father and the mother of the child, and those who were with him, and entered where the child was lying. Then he took the child by the hand, and said to her, Talitha kumi, which is translated, Little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately the girl arose and walked, for she was twelve years of age, and they were overcome with great amazement. But he commanded them strictly that no one should know it, and said that something should be given her to eat. Mark 5, 25-34 Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for twelve years, and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment, for she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him, 
and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Mark 6, 4-5 Jesus said to them, A prophet is not dishonoured, except in his hometown, and among his own relatives, and in his own household. And he could not do any miracle there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. Mark 6, 7-13 and he called the twelve to himself, and began to send them out two by two, and gave them power over unclean spirits. He commanded them to take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bag, no bread, no copper in their money belts, but to wear sandals, and not to put on two tunics. Also he said to them, In whatever place you enter a house, stay there till you depart from that place. And whoever will not receive you, nor hear you, when you depart from there, shake off the dust under your feet as a testimony against them. Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. So they went out and preached that people should repent, and they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. Mark 6, 53-56 When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognised him, and rushed about that whole region, and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces, and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. Mark 7, 31-37 Again, departing from the region of Tyre and Sidon, he came through the midst of the region of Decapolis to the Sea of Galilee. Then they brought to him one who was deaf, and had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to put his hand on him. And he took him aside from the multitude, and put his fingers in his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed, and said to him, Epphata, that is, be opened. Immediately his ears were opened, and the impediment of his tongue was loosed, and he spoke plainly. Then he commanded them that they should tell no one, but the more he commanded them, the more widely they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He makes both the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Mark eight twenty two to 26 Then he came to Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man to him, and begged him to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand, and led him out of the town, and when he had spit on his eyes, and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. Then he put his hands on his eyes again, and made him look up, and he was restored, and saw everyone clearly. Then he sent him away to his house, saying, Neither go into the town, nor tell anyone in the town. Mark 10, 46-52 Now they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. 
Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Mark 16, 17 to 18. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Luke 4, 38-39 Then he, Jesus, got up and left the synagogue, and entered Simon's home. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked him to help her. And standing over her, he rebuked the fever, and it left her, and she immediately got up and served them. Luke 4.40 As the sun was setting, all those who had any who were sick with various kinds of diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on each of them and cured them. Luke 5.12-15 And it happened that when he was in a certain city, that behold, a man who was full of leprosy saw Jesus. And he fell on his face and implored him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then he put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately the leprosy left him. And he charged him to tell no one, but go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing as a testimony to them, just as Moses commanded. However, the report went around concerning him all the more, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. Luke 5, 17-26 Now it happened on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by, who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Then behold, men brought on a bed a man who was paralysed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. And when they could not find how they might bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the housetop and let him down with his bed through the tiling into the midst before Jesus. When he saw their faith, he said to him, Man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Rise up and walk? but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralysed, I say to you, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately he rose up before them, took up what he had been lying on, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. Luke 6, 6 6-10 On another Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught, and a man was there whose right hand was withered. 
Now the scribes and the Pharisees were watching him closely to see if he healed on the Sabbath, so that they might find a reason to accuse him. But he knew what they were thinking, and he said to the man with the withered hand, Get up and come forward. And he got up and came forward. And Jesus said to them, I ask you whether it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath or to do harm, to save a life or to destroy it. And after looking around at them all, he said to him, Stretch out your hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored. Luke six seventeen to 19 And he came down with them, and stood on a level place with the crowd of his disciples, and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem, and from the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear him and be healed of their diseases, as well as those who were tormented with unclean spirits, and they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for power went out from him and healed them all. Luke 7, 1-10 now when he concluded all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. And a certain centurion's servant, who was dear to him, was sick and ready to die. So when he heard about Jesus, he sent elders of the Jews to him, pleading with him to come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they begged him earnestly, saying that the one for whom he should do this was deserving for he loves our nation, and has built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them, and when he was already not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Therefore, I did not even think myself worthy to come to you, but say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I am also a man placed under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to one, Go, and he goes, and to another, Come, and he comes, and to my servant, Do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard these things, he marvelled at him, and turned around and said to the crowd that followed him, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And those who were sent, returning to the house, found the servant well who had been sick. Luke 7, 11-15 Soon afterward Jesus went to a city called Nain, and his disciples were going along with him, accompanied by a large crowd. Now as he approached the gate of the city, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a sizable crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he felt compassion for her, and said to her, Do not go on weeping. And he came up and touched the coffin, and the bearers came to a halt, and he said, Young man, I say to you, Arise. And the dead man sat up, and began to speak, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. Luke seven nineteen to 23 And John, calling two of his disciples to him, sent them to Jesus, saying, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? When the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? And that very hour he cured many of infirmities, afflictions, and evil spirits, and to many blind he gave sight. Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things that you have seen and heard, that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached to them.
and blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Luke 8, 43-48 Now a woman, having a flow of blood for twelve years, who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitudes throng and press you, and you say, Who touched me? But Jesus said, Somebody touched me, for I perceived power going out from me. Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling, and falling down before him, she declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him, and how she was healed immediately. And he said to her, Daughter, be of good cheer, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Luke 8, 40-42 and 49-56 And as Jesus was returning, the people welcomed him, for they had all been waiting for him. And a man named Jairus came, and he was an official of the synagogue, and he fell at Jesus' feet and began urging him to come to his house, for he had an only daughter, about twelve years old, and she was dying. But as he went, the crowds were pressing against him. While he was still speaking, someone came from the house of the synagogue official, saying, Your daughter has died. Do not trouble the teacher any more. But when Jesus heard this, he responded to him, Do not be afraid any longer. Only believe, and she will be made well. When he came to the house, he did not allow anyone to enter with him except Peter, John and James, and the girl's father and mother. Now they were all weeping and mourning for her, but he said, Stop weeping, for she has not died, but is asleep. And they began laughing at him, knowing that she had died. He, however, took her by the hand and spoke forcefully, saying, Child, Arise. And her spirit returned, and she got up immediately, and he ordered that something be given her to eat. Her parents were amazed, but he instructed them to tell no one what had happened. Luke 9 1 6. Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons, and to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God, and to heal the sick. And he said to them, Take nothing for the journey, neither staffs, nor bag, nor bread, nor money, and do not have two tunics apiece. Whatever house you enter, stay there, and from there depart. And whoever will not receive you, when you go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet as a testimony against them. So they departed and went through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Luke 9, 10-11 When the apostles returned, they gave an account to him of all that they had done. And taking them with him, he withdrew privately to a city called Bethsaida. But the crowds were aware of this and followed him, and he welcomed them and began speaking to them about the kingdom of God and curing those who had need of healing. Luke 10, 5-9 but whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, it will return to you. 
and remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they give you, for the labourer is worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whatever city you enter, and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you, and heal the sick there, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. Luke 13, 10-17 Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity eighteen years, and was bent over, and could in no way raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him, and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight, and glorified God. But the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. And he said to the crowd, There are six days on which men ought to work. Therefore, come and be healed on them, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or donkey from the stall, and lead it away to water it? So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think of it for eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath? And when he said these things, all his adversaries were put to shame, and all the multitude rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Luke 14, 1-6 It happened that when he went into the house of one of the leaders of the Pharisees on the Sabbath to eat bread, they were watching him closely. And there, in front of him, was a man suffering from edema. And Jesus responded, and said to the lawyers and the Pharisees, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath, or not? But they kept silent, and he took hold of him, and healed him, and sent him away. And he said to them, Which one of you will have a son or an ox fall into a well, and will not immediately pull him out on a Sabbath day. And they could offer no reply to this. Luke 17, 11-19 Now it happened, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then, as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned, and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not found any who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you well. Luke 18, 35-43 Now as Jesus was approaching Jericho, a man who was blind was sitting by the road begging. But when he heard a crowd going by, he began inquiring what this was. They told him that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by, and he called out, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way were sternly telling him to be quiet, but he kept crying out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped 
and commanded that he be brought to him. And when he came near, he asked him, What do you want me to do for you? And he said, Lord, I want to regain my sight. And Jesus said to him, Regain your sight. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he regained his sight and began following him, glorifying God. And when all the people saw it, they gave praise to God. Luke twenty two forty seven to 51 While he was still speaking, behold, a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading the way for them, and he approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When those who were around him saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus responded and said, Stop, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. John 4, 46-53 So Jesus again came to Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water into wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. And when he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and implored him to come down to heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. The nobleman said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, Go your way, your son lives. So the man believed the word Jesus spoke to him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Your son lives. Then he inquired of them the hour when he got better, and they said to him, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was the same hour in which Jesus said to him, your son lives. And he himself believed, and his whole household. John 5, 2-9 Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralysed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first, after the stirring of the water, was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity thirty-eight years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been in that condition a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, but while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked and that day was the Sabbath. John 6, 1-2 After these things, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, or Tiberias. A large crowd was following him, because they were watching the signs which he was performing on those who were sick. John 9, 1-11 Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, 
neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went and washed, and came back, seeing. Therefore the neighbours and those who had previously seen that he was blind said, Is this not he who sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. He said, I am he. Therefore they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He answered and said, A man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, and I received sight. John 11, 1-44 Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil, and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then, after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. These things he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go, that I may wake him up. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he was speaking about taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Then Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away, and many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been there, my brother would not have died, but even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Then Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God who is to come into the world. And when she had said these things, she went her way and secretly called Mary her sister, saying, The teacher has come and is calling for you. 
As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha had met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and comforting her, when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out, followed her, saying, She is going to the tomb to weep there. Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled, and he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man, who opened the eyes of the blind, also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from that place where the dead man was lying, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me, and I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth! And he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go.